Hello, everyone. Welcome into another edition of Card Sharks. I'd like to give a big shout out to Mr. Ben Mason for today's opening poem. And if you'd like to leave an opening poem for the show, leave it in the comment section below. Now, on with today's game. Aces and deuces are the best in the land. Call them right and win 32 grand on Card Shark. This is the game where a single turn of the cards can win you over $32,000 in cash. Now, to get us started, here's your host of Card Sharks, Brandon Scrub. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome into another edition of Card Sharks right here at MVP Productions. Glad to join us here once again. Over the last couple of episodes, we have crowned ourselves a pair of champions that have done really well in the game so far, and now they are back here to have ourselves a champions battle to determine who our overall champion is going to be. So, let's meet our players for our first game here, starting with our current reigning overall champion. Uh, he won at the end of uh, a couple episodes ago. He picked, he picked himself up a nice total of $7,000 in cash so far. Please welcome back Nick Dennison. Thank you. Thank you so much. Glad to have you back with us, Nick. Uh, picked up your first victory here, your first time actually on any of the shows here on MVG. How did you, you enjoy your experience? It's been fantastic. And I'm very looking forward to for doing another game, so hopefully very soon. It's not going to win yet, but see what happens. <laughs> oh, well, fantastic. Well, good luck to you today. You're defending your overall championship against our current reigning interim champion, who so far through two games has amassed a pretty healthy total to the tune of $14,350. Please welcome back Mr. Aaron Glenn. Hello. Aaron, not, ba a, not a bad showing on our last episode. You became our interim champion there. Over fourteen grand through two plays of the uh, money cards there. Do you think you, you have the skills enough what it needs to take down the the young rookie here? Uh, <clears throat> I think I do. Just hope the cars be uh be nice to me today. All right. Well, fantastic. Well, hopefully things get in. Uh, hopefully line up for both of you guys, and we have a, a great game here with Car Sharks. So let's get right into it. Our first, our I think our only our second champions battle of this season. Here, so let's get into it. Um, Nick, our, our overall reigning champion, is going to be playing the red cards. Aaron, our interim champion, acting as our challenger for this game, will be playing the blue cards. Remember, it takes the best two out of three match in order to go on to the money cards for a chance at $32,000 in cash. So let's jump into it with our first question here of the day. goes to our reigning champion, Nick. Nick, we asked 100 women who are strong feminists, and we asked them, would you like to be a man for a day? How many of those hundred women said yes, they would like to be a man for what day? Well, let's go with 15. How many? 15. 15 of the hundred said they would like to be a man for a day. Aaron, higher or lower than 15? You know, I think that number is going to be a little bit low, uh, let me not lower, higher. I'll go higher. A little bit higher than that. All right, if the answer is higher, you will be playing your cards first. If not, it will be Nick. The actual number of women feminists who are would like to actually be a man for a single day is 44. It is higher. All right, so Aaron, you've got control of your cards first. Let's take a look at your base card for this opening game here. We start you off with the dreaded snowman. Ooh. Get rid of them. All right, you won the question. You have the right to change that base card. The eight goes away, and now we find a queen. It's better, lower. Going on lower than the queen. It's an eight up the middle. Good change on your part. I'm going to freeze. Going to freeze it right there. All right, keeping control of the cards away from Nick, and you're up two cards to nothing in this first game. We go to question number two. This one goes to you, Aaron. Aaron, we asked 100 women who have served in the military, and we asked them, have you ever made out in the back of a tank? How many of those women said, yes, they have made out in the back of a tank? 
kind of hard imagining to make our uh, video go like. <laughs> uh, I think that number's only around. I'll say nineteen. You say nineteen out of a hundred of them that they have made out in the back of a tank. Nick, higher or lower than nineteen? Let's go a little higher. A little higher than that. So y'all think you're getting freaky you run all the bombs and the shells of the men <laughs> out there. I see it. Okay. Let's see. The actual number of women who served in the military who have made out in the back of a tank is only two of them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Nick. Uh, Aaron, you actually got that one because it was not higher. Um, Aaron, you've got control. You've got that eight. What would you like to do? All right, let's change it. All right, changing that eight again. Hopefully, you find another good card and in this place. We find a six. Uh, that's a little better. Let's go higher. Higher than the six. Oh no, it's a Ooh. two. No good there. You're gonna lose that. You lose that card there, and we give Aaron, uh, Nick a free chance to play his base card of a nine. Let's go lower. Going lower than the nine. It's a six. Let's go higher. Going on higher than the six. Uh -huh. Oh no, it's a five. Oh, wow. There you lose those two cards there. That's right. Tough break there. We go on to our third question of this game, and the question goes back to Nick on this one. Nick, we asked 100 inmates in prison. We asked them, do you feel sorry for the victims or yourselves for the crime that you committed? How many of those 100 inmates feel, said they feel sorrier for themselves for committing the crime? It's going to have to go with 55. 55 out of 100 of them said they feel sorrier for themselves than the victims of their crimes there. Uh, Aaron, higher or lower than 55? I feel like that's going to be a little bit... It's going to go higher on this one. You're going to go higher on that, too. Yeah. All right, we'll see. The actual number of inmates who said they feel... Uh, more sorry for themselves than they do their victims because of the crimes they committed is 60. It is higher. Aaron, doing well on the uh, high-low surveys today. Uh, Aaron, you've got that six. What do you want to do? Well, let's change it. Changing it again. Hoping to find a better card this time. Instead of the six, we have another six. Oh, oh boy. Uh, higher. Try it again. Higher than the six. Oh, no, it's another three. You lose that card there. Nick, a free chance to play your nine. Let's go. Uh, let's try going higher. Try it. Going against the odds here. Higher than the nine. It's a jack. Let's go lower. Going lower than the jack. It's a two. Higher. Going on higher than the two. It's a four. Higher. For the first game of the match and a three. Thousand dollar bonus for sweeping the board higher than a four. It's a ten. He's got it. Well oh, done, sir. Well Five hundred dollars there for winning the match, plus a thousand dollar bonus for sweeping the board. There, uh, you've got yourself eight thousand five hundred dollars now. But more importantly, you're up one game to nothing. So we're going to see how things work out here. We'll clear the board off, deal the next cards off the top of the deck, and see. If we can play catch, Eric can play some catch up here. We'll go ahead and start uh, game number two here with a question to Aaron, who starts off this round. Aaron, we asked 100 divorced women who are receiving alimony from their ex-husband, and we asked them, are you receiving more money now from your ex-husband than you did when you were married to them? How many of those 100 divorced women said they are receiving more money now from their ex-husband than they did when they were married to him? Hmm. I'm going to go 50. 50, right up the middle there, he says. Nick, higher or lower than 50? Let's go higher. I'm going to say even higher than that. Well, the actual number of divorced women who are receiving more money now from their ex-husband than they did when they were married to them is 27. It is not lower. Aaron, a chance for you to get back in this game here. You start off this round of uh, card sharks with a deuce. Higher. Going on higher than the two. It's an ace. Lower. Going on lower than the ace. It's a nine. Freeze it. Gonna freeze it right there. All right. Three card advantage over Nick here. 
in this early going of this part of the game. We'll go to question number two this time. This one goes back to Nick. All right, Nick, there was a book published in the early 80s that, all, that talked specifically about men's butts, and they featured photos in the cutest <laughs> American butts of the country. This true story. So we asked 100 men today in 2020, would you pose in your underwear for a book about men's butts? And would you? Um, and we asked them, "Would you do it?" How many of them said yes? They would. Let's go with eleven. Eleven of them said that they would. Aaron, higher or lower than eleven? Mm, unless they're getting paid for it, but uh, <laughs> uh, I think it might be higher. Say higher than that. Well, I would think in the world in this world of Instagrams and everything that we live in nowadays where people are posting pictures left and right, I would not be surprised to see this answer higher. So I'm curious to see myself. I see the actual number of men who would pose in their underwear for a book about men's butts is 43. It is higher. <laughs> Aaron, doing well for yourself? You got that nine, sir. What would you like to do? Get rid of it. All right, the nine goes away and out to play. We find ugh, the eight right up the middle. Ooh. Oh, boy. I'm going to go lower. Trying, trying to see if we can get, call it right here. Lower than the eight. No, it's a king. You lose that card there, giving Nick now a free chance to get in this round. Starts you off this game also with an eight. Oh, boy. Um, let's, let's go higher. Going on higher than the eight. Oh no, it's a six. There you lose that card there. Winter has come early to our board here. As both players mm -hmm. now dealing with a snowman in a bad position here. Let's go on to question number three now this round. This one goes back to Aaron. Aaron, we asked 100 married women. Right now, are you mad at your husband? How many of them said they were mad at their husband at that moment when we asked them? Hmm. If they did, they probably did some stupid. But um, say I'll say forty-two. Forty-two out of a hundred of them said that they're mad at their husband right now. Nick, higher or lower than forty-two? Let's go. Let's go lower. And going lower than that. All right, let's see. The actual number of married women who said they are mad at their husband right now is six. It is lower. Mm. All right, Nick, chance for you to play that eight. What would you like to do? All right. Let's, let's try it again. Let's go higher. You're going to keep the eight and going to go higher than the eight. It's a nine. Let's go higher. All right, again, against the odds, higher than the nine. Oh, no, it's a three there. You lose those two cards there, giving Aaron a free chance to play his eight. I'm going to go higher. Go on, higher than the eight. Oh, no, it's a three there. You lose that card as well. These snowmen are not melting for anybody here on this one, and we are at our fourth and final question of this round. Someone must win on this play of the cards. This question goes to Nick. Nick, we asked 100 single women. If if you have a if a single woman has a baby and wants to give it up for adoption, should the father of the baby have equal say in the decision? How many women say the father should have an equal say in wanting to give up a baby for an adoption? Now, wow. remember, remember we asked 100 single women this question. Mhm. Mm that would have to go with every one. How many? L D one. Thirty one out of a hundred of them said the father should have equal say in giving up the baby for adoption. Aaron, higher or lower than thirty one? I'm gonna go a little bit higher. And say even higher than that. The actual number of single women who believe that a father should have equal say in giving up the baby for adoption is sixty. It is higher. Not bad. All right. Aaron Decision is yours, sir. You have an eight. You can play your cards and change the eight if you'd like. Only needing two cards to tie up the match. Nick also has an eight there, but he needs to run the board again in order to win and become champion. 
So the option is yours, sir. Do you want to play it or do you want to pass it? Uh, Nick, good luck. Run the board. All right, Nick. Oh, he's, he's put it in your. All right, let's go higher. All right, going on higher than the eight. Oh no, it's a two. Oh. That means that means Aaron went ties up the match. Well done for you, Aaron, there. Another $500 in your bank there brings you up to $14,850. We are all tied up now, one game apiece. So that means we're going to go to sudden death. Three cards, only one question to determine who gets control of them. And as always, in this particular game, our, uh, in our tiebreaker it goes to our overall champion, and that one is you, Nick. So, all Nick, right. we asked 100 women who are dating a married man, and we simply asked them, have you ever tried to get your way in a dispute by threatening to tell the married man's wife all about her? How many of those women said yes, they have done that? Go of 45. 45 out of 100 of them said that they've threatened that. Aaron, higher or lower than 45? Mm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's certainly a way to get their way. I think it might be higher. I'm going to say even higher than that. Well, for all important control of the cards here, the actual number of women who were dating a married man that said they would use, they would try to blackmail them, essentially, in order to get their way in a dispute is 16 is not higher. Not as, not as many bad women out there as, as, we, see, as we think here. So um, it's on you, sir. All right, Nick, here's your choices here. You can... I'm going to show you each your base cards, and then it's up to you to decide what you want to do. Remember, if you'd like to play your cards, you have the right to change your base card since you won the question, or you can pass it to Aaron. He cannot change his base card. We'll start by showing you Aaron's base card first. It's a queen. Your base mm. card is a two. Mm. Choice is yours. Do you want to play or do you want to pass it? I'm playing. You're going to play it. All right, do you want to keep the two? Keep it. All right, need both cards correct in order to win the game and the match. Otherwise, Aaron becomes our new grand champion. Let's go higher. Going on, higher than the two. It's a seven. Go, going higher. For the game and the match to remain as champion, higher than a seven. It's a ten. He's done it. Yeah. Well done, sir. Another $500 for you brings you up to $9,000. you are going on the play the money cards here in just a minute. Aaron, we got to say goodbye to you, sir, but you leave us here with $14,850 in our thanks for playing. All right, folks, stick around. We'll be back with the money cards right after this. Welcome back to Card Sharks here. Our champion, Nick, has got himself $9,000 in cash so far. And now he's going to get a chance to play the money card, sir. Remember how this works. We start you on the bottom with $200, bet, brand new betting money. Work your way across the bottom row, uh, calling higher or lower, making bets there. So you get to the second row where you get an additional $400 and three more cards. Remember, minimum bets are $50 each and then $50 increments till you get up to the big bet card where you must bet at least half your winnings. And of course, if you get stuck along the way, you can change the card with one of the three cards we have dealt along the side of the game here. And should you get a perfect double, double, double all the way to the top of the board, you're going to win yourself $32,000 in cash. All right. Are you ready to play? Here we go. All right. Best of luck to you. Let's deal out those cards. And we'll give you $200 in betting money. <coughs> Good luck to you. We'll start you off with this round of the money cards with an eight. Let's thank that to a one. Change that with which one? Number one. All right, number one. All right. The snowmen keep finding their way into the studio today. I'm mildly concerned about this. Somebody shut the door. Anyway, that eight goes away and out to play. We find a jack. Everything low. Betting it all. $200 lower than the jack. It's a five. Doubled up. $400. $100 higher. Okay, $100 higher than the five. It's a king. There you go. Everything 500 now. Lower. What was that? Everything lower. All right, trying to double up for $1,000, babies. All of it lower than a king. 
It's a nine. There we go. Thousand dollars. We move that nine up to the next row. Give you another four hundred dollars there. You have fourteen hundred dollars and a nine. Let's change that to number two. Number three, you said? No, number two. Number two, okay. Change changing that nine. The nine goes away, and now we find a three. Everything higher. All right. Come on, no twos here. Double up. All of it higher than a three. Oh, no! What? Oh, the one time we didn't want to see a two there. Ugh, oh, that, that's, that's a heartbreaker, sir. Unfortunately, no money for you here in the money cards in this one, but you are still our champion. You still have $9,000, and you are going to get a chance to take on another opponent, and we'll have that opponent for you right after this short commercial timeout. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Card Sharks here. Nick, our champion there, unfortunately running into some bad luck on those money cards there. He's got himself $9,000 in cash so far, and now he's ready to take on his next opponent, so let's meet him now. Please welcome back to your, from the uh, from the state of Kentucky. I uh, no, sorry. He's from Tennessee. Excuse me. Welcome back, Mr. Brandon Hankel. Hello there, everybody. How y'all doing? Glad to have you back here, sir. Uh, remind the good folks at home a little bit about yourself once again. I'm Lee. I'm Brandon Hinkle, of course, and I am from Knoxville, Tennessee, and I'm a guest ambassador. Fantastic. Well, glad to have you back. You ready to play some card sharks? You bet I am. Get the Rooney. Let's do this. Okay, let's get right into our game here. Nick, trying to see if he can pick up his third win here as champion here. <laughs> And we go on to start with a question to our ch champion, Nick. Nick, we asked 100 million, uh, sorry, 100 mothers of millionaire sons, and we asked them, whenever you call, their, call your son at the office, do you get put on hold? How many of those mothers said, yes, their millionaire sons do put their mothers on hold? You would have to go with 50. 15 or 50? I go. All right, 50 right up the middle there. Brandon, higher or lower than 50? I think that's a, a midget higher. Just a midget. A little bit higher than there. All right, we'll see. The actual number of mothers with millionaire sons who said they get put on hold when they call their son at the office is 23. It is not lower. I'm oh, sorry, it's not higher. It's lower. I swear I can speak English today, folks. I'm just having one of those days. I promise you. <laughs> All right, uh, Nick, we've got to control the cards here, sir. Let's take a look at your opening base card for this game. We have a six. Let's go higher. Going on higher than the six. It's a jack. Going, lower. Going on lower than the jack. It's a seven. Let's stop it right there. Going to freeze right there. All right, taking a three-card advantage over Brandon here. As we move on to question number two now, this one goes to Brandon. Brandon, we asked 100 bachelors, have you ever gotten the hiccups during a romantic moment? How many of 100 bachelors said, yes, they have? 18. 18? All right. 18 out of 100 of them said they have. Nick, higher or lower than 18? Hmm. Let's go a little higher. Let's see, a little higher than that. The actual number of bachelors who have had gotten hiccups during a romantic moment is 21. It is higher. All right, Nick, back in control. You've got that seven again. Let's go higher. Going to keep the seven and going higher. It's a 10. Let's go higher. Against the odds for the first game of the match, higher than a 10. It's a queen. He's got it. Oh. Nicely done, sir. Five hundred dollars there. Just he had a gut feeling, and he went with it. It worked out well. He's got himself ninety-five hundred dollars. Brandon's got some catching up to do quickly on this one. So let's go ahead and clear out those cards and get set up for our next round of play here. And on this one, we start round two begins with a champion to our challenger on this one. So, Brandon. We asked 100 Englishmen, 
Have you ever been inside an actual haunted house? How many of those hundred Englishmen said yes, they have? Well, let's see here. Um, I know one haunted house, and that's in Gallenberg, Tennessee, and I think that one is called the Murder Mystery, I think it's called. I'm pretty sure it is. So wipe me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure it is. So I'm thinking this is around about... Not a high number. I'm thinking maybe 24. 24 out of 100 um, said they have been inside a haunted house. Nick, higher or lower than 24? More than that. Higher. You're going to say even more than that. Well, considering the history of ghosts and goblins over in the UK, I would not be surprised to see that number being a lot higher myself. But we'll see. The actual number of Englishmen who said they have been inside a real haunted house is 35. It is much higher. It was the answer is higher, but not as high as I thought it would be. I was thinking somewhere around sixty or seventy myself personally. But. Well, like I say, I didn't think it was that much high either. All right, Nick, you've got control of the cards. We'll start you off with your base card for this one: a three. Higher. Going on higher than the three. It's a six. Higher. Going on higher than the six. It's an ace. Wow. Going on lower than the ace. It's a nine. Higher. Going against the odds to win the game and the match, higher than a nine. It's a queen, he's got it! Wow! Oh my goodness. That is a very impressive card calling there, Nick. He won the game of the match up to $11,000. You're going to play the money cards again in just a minute. Brandon, it was short lived, sir, but hopefully you had a good time with us. Yeah, that's a, just amazing card calling there by Nick. Had a gut feeling there. He's got himself $11,000. He's going to go see if he can add himself another $32,000 in the money cards. We'll do that right after the break. Stay with us. Very impressive. Very impressive. Welcome back to Card Sharks here. Some amazing card calling done by Nick here. He's mentioned we're told on to his championship. He's got $11,000. And he's getting ready to get another chance here at our money cards on this one. You know how this works, Nick. So I'm not going to waste any time. And I'm just going to wish you best of luck as we jump right into it. And take a look at your opening base card for this round of the money cards. A three. Let's go, everything High. All right, trying to double up. $200. Higher than a three. It's a seven. Four hundred dollars for the seven. One hundred dollars higher. Okay, one hundred dollars higher than the seven. Oh no, it's a five. There, you lose it. Down to three hundred. All right, let's let's bring that up. Uh, everything higher. Betting it all again. Three hundred dollars higher than a five. Oh no, it's a two. There. It's okay, but you got a great card. We're gonna move that up to the next round. Give you the four hundred dollars of betting money. You have four hundred dollars on a card you can't lose on. Let's go everything higher. All right, come on, no twos here. We want to give away some money. All of it higher than the two. It's a three. There we go. Reverse of what we've seen there in the first game. There, going for it again though. Eight hundred dollars higher than the three. It's a seven. One hundred dollars higher. Not ch opting not to change it, going one hundred dollars higher than the seven. It's a nine. Seventeen hundred dollars there. We move the nine up. Do you want to change it? Yep, I do. Let's try number two. All right, all important change here for the money cards. That nine be goes away, and for the money card for the big bet, we find the four. Let's go everything higher. All right, for nothing at all. Or three thousand four hundred dollars if this card is higher than a four. It's a nine. He's got it. Well done, sir. That is three thousand four hundred dollars for you there. Added to what you previously won, you now have a three-game total of fourteen thousand four hundred dollars. Well done. Congratulations there, and we're going to see you back on our next episode here to try to add to your winnings there. 
But that is it for this one, folks. The back half of this episode kind of flew by in just no time here. But we thank you all for watching another episode of Card Sharks here. If you want to see more of the show, check out the first season's playlist here on the channel. And if you want to see other great game shows we've done here, past, present, and future, click that subscribe button down below and ring the bell. That way you never miss out on all the fun and games going down here at MVG Productions. And until the cards are dealt out once again, and we see Nick back here trying to make his strive for five, I'm your host, Braden Scruggs, saying thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time right here on Card Shark. So long, everyone. This is your announcer, Michael Gentry, speaking for Card Shucks, an MVG Productions presentation.